through which your strength and blessing may be poured forth upon his people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, let us now lay the foundation of our temple. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. We are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly frameth together, groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Except the Lord built the house, their labor is but lost that build it. The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. O Lord, thou hast created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of thine own eternity. Yet often we forget the glory of our heritage and wander from the path which leads to righteousness. But thou, O Lord, hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are ever restless till we find their rest in thee. Look with the eyes of thy love upon our manifold imperfections and pardon all our shortcomings that we may be filled with the brightness of the everlasting light and become the unspotted mirror of thy power and the image of thy goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. with prayer shall our temple be built. To God alone be the glory.
blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory be to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of good will. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord Christ, alone born of the Father, O Lord God, indwelling light, Son of the Father, whose wisdom mightily and sweetly ordereth all things, pour forth thy love. Thou, whose strength upholdeth and sustaineth all creation, receive our prayer. Thou, whose beauty shineth through the whole universe, unveil thy glory. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, O Christ, the Lord of love, we lay our hearts upon thy shrine, pay, praying that thou wilt accept, purify, and enkindle them, so that they may forever glow with the undying fire of thine infinite compassion, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, throughout all ages of ages. Amen. Almighty God, who art the strength of them who put their trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, we commend to thy fatherly, fatherly goodness those who are afflicted with this pandemic in our midst, and we pray thee to strengthen and bless those who minister to them through Christ. Amen. We praise thee, O Lord, for the example and assistance given to us by the holy martyr St. Alban, the patron of our church throughout the world. And we pray thee that under his protection, thy church may continually serve thee in all good works. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord Christ, who for her wondrous humility and purity hast exalted the Holy Lady Mary among the hosts of heaven. 
Grant that we, thy people, may so follow that her most noble example, that we may at the latter end be found worthy to serve thee, even as do thy holy angels, thou who livest and reignest in glory forevermore. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, with all our hearts we praise thee for the great glory of thy most holy archangel Michael and for all thy holy angels. We thank thee for their wonderful wisdom, their supreme strength, their radiant beauty, and as their resistless power is used always and utterly in thy service, so may we, following zealously their resplendent example, devote ourselves wholly to the helping of our brethren, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Teach us, O Lord, to see thy life in all men and in all the peoples of thine earth, and so guide the nations into the understanding of thy laws that peace and goodwill may reign upon earth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is taken from the fourth chapter of the first epistle general of St. John, beginning at the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time, we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us his spirit. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him, because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God? whom he hath not seen. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks. He that loveth wisdom loveth life, and they that seek her early shall be filled with joy. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall keep it with my whole heart. The path of the just is as the shining light, shining more and more unto the perfect day. Mayest thou be blessed by him in whose honor thou shalt be burned.
Cleanse my heart and my lips, O God, who by the hand of thy seraph didst cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal from thine altar, and in thy loving kindness so purify me that I may worthily proclaim thy holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that through my heart the love of God may shine forth and through my lips his power be made manifest. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is taken from the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him, but go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
got the angels to help us in our service in this homily. So in last week's Gospel from Luke, the people were afraid of the angels that appeared unto them, and the angels replied, Fear not. You might ask yourselves, how would you react to the presence of angels? Would you feel fear like the people, like the people of Luke's Gospel? There are angels here with us right now. As you heard me say this morning, the celebrant at the beginning of the Eucharist asks for angelic assistance right at the start in the Asperger with the words, I pray our Heavenly Father that he will send his holy angel to build for us a spiritual temple through which his strength and blessing may be poured forth upon his people. These are very important words. At this call, the angel of the Eucharist appears at that moment and stays with us until the celebrant dismisses all the angels at the end with the words, Ite Nephi Est, which is to say, Go, it is finished. Bishop C.W. Leadbeater, in his important work, The Science of the Sacraments, tells us a lot about the angelic help that goes on during the Eucharist talks of the angel of the Eucharist, the angel of the presence, the directing angel of the first ray, and so many others who join in the work of creating the temple not made with hands. There is an illustration in this book that shows the Eucharistic edifice constructed by the angels. This spiritual temple holds the power of our Lord Christ that floods in when the bread and wine are consecrated until it is spread abroad about our world with the help of all humanity. I'd like to share a couple of selections of Leadbeater's words with you. First, he writes, Be it understood, then, that the angel of the Eucharist erects for us what is called a thought form of subtle matter, inside which the divine force can be stored and can accumulate until it can be directed and used. The chief object of the sacrifice of the Holy Eucharist is to offer an opportunity for the special downpouring of divine force from the very highest level, and to provide such a vehicle for that force as may enable those angelic helpers to use it for certain definite purposes in our physical world. So about here is built that spiritual temple by the angels, with the subtle matter of the higher worlds, the astral, the lower mental, the higher mental, and so on. Leadbeater continues, sometimes, though rarely, this hidden side of religious services may be seen in full activity, and no one has even once had the privilege of seeing such a splendid manifestation can for a moment doubt that the hidden side of a church service is of an importance infinitely greater than anything purely physical. Such a one would see the dazzling blue spire or dome of the highest height of astral matter rushing upward into the sky, far above the image of it in stone that sometimes crowns the physical edifice in which the worshipers are gathered. They would see the, the blinding glory that pours down through it and spreads out like a great flood of living light over all the surrounding regions. The angels in general, Red Peter says, there are many orders and races of these radiant non-human spirits, and most of them have at the present stage of human evolution but little connection Certain types, however, are ever ready to take part in religious ceremonies, not only for the pleasure of doing a good action, but because such work offers them the best possible opportunity for progress. Four times in the course of the Eucharistic service does the priest call upon the holy angels for their help, and we may be well assured that he never calls in vain for a link with these celestial hosts is one of the advantages that are conferred upon him in his ordination. On this occasion, he invokes what is commonly called the angel of the Eucharist, whose special work in connection with it is to assist in the building of the edifice. 
intones, lift up your hearts, and the congregation responds, we lift them up into the Lord. That moment, the angel of the Eucharist seizes at the same time the lovely music form and the mental force put forth by the psalmist and sends them sweeping down the church with a splendid gesture of supreme command. And as the response of the people comes swirling back like a great rush of living fire, the angel whirls it all upward in a mighty soaring flame which fills the dome of the Eucharistic edifice and streams upward through the lantern in the space. Lead reader details the rest of the Eucharist as the directing angel of the first ray takes over where the angel of the Eucharist left off and also talks of the work done by the angel's presence who transfers Christ's power into the elements of bread and wine at the moment of consecration. The angels are here. They work for us and with us. And they are evolving just as we are on their own line of evolution. We owe them a debt of gratitude, for our world would be a less fair place without the help they give us and without the radiance they bring to our churches. We are surrounded by them at all times, and especially here and now for the Eucharist. They also appear for the healing service when the priest calls for the specific help of the holy archangel Raphael. I'd like to close with some words that came from an angel to Jeffrey Hodson, another clairvoyant of our church. Hodson related the angel's words in the inner side of church worship. There is an order of angels attached to the Christian church who being dedicated to the service of Christ and serving as channels and preservers of his blessing and his power attend every service held in his name. Filled with his love and compassion, they seek to bear those priceless gifts to the souls of men at the great celebration of the mystery of the bread and wine they come, that every thirsting soul shall receive according to his need. Men know and see them not, and so the angel servers pass unnoticed and unknown. In the religion of the future, they will emerge from their invisibility, and men will see them face to face. Between the present blindness and the future knowledge is a yawning chasm, which only those who have been taught the deeper truths of religion and life can bridge. When you enter a church, you are in the presence of the angelic hosts. Turn your thoughts to them, therefore inviting them to share your worship and your praise of him who is the teacher both of angels and of men. Release your minds from your material concerns. They may become alert, watchful, and alive to the subtler forces of the church service. Strive to exalt your consciousness into the recognition of the splendor and beauty of God's answer to your prayer, that you may more deeply reverence him. If the gulf between the past and the future is to be bridged, Religion must become real. Christ and his angels must be known as living truth, as unfading reality. And worship must be full of joy. The thousand altars of his faith must be approached with reverence and awe. Human life and human conduct must be made worthy of the privilege, so inexpressibly great, of that presence ever in its midst. Every day must indeed be a holy day, every hour, a holy hour, because of the knowledge of his divine companionship. Then shall the human race move forward into the next cycle of the mighty spiral of its evolutionary path. As humankind progresses, the angels shall travel side by side with them, 
singing songs of celestial beauty and joy. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, three persons in one God, be ascribed all honor, might, power, and dominion, now and forevermore. Let us now continue our worship with the act of faith. We believe that God is love and power and truth and light, that perfect justice rules the world, that all his sons shall one day reach his feet however far they stray. We hold the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man. We know that we do serve him best when best we serve our brother man. So shall his blessing rest on us, and peace forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. We adore thee, O God, who art the source of all life and goodness, and with true and thankful hearts we offer unto thee this token of thine own life-giving gifts bestowed upon us, thou who art the giver of all. According to immemorial custom, we now mix water with this wine, praying, Thee, O Lord, that we may evermore abide in Christ, and he in us. We offer unto Thee, O Lord, this chalice, with joy and gladness. May the worship which we offer ascend before Thy divine majesty as a sacrifice, pure and acceptable in Thy sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. thou be blessed by him in whose honor thou shalt be burned.
As this incense rises before thee, O Lord, so let our prayer be set forth in thy sight. Let thy holy angels encompass thy people and breathe forth upon them the spirit of thy blessing. May the Lord enkindle within us the fire of his love and the flame of everlasting charity. built a temple for the distribution of Christ's power. Let us now prepare a channel for its reception, and to that end, pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at thy hands, and sanctify our lives in his service. We lay before thee, O Lord, these thy creatures of bread and wine, linking them spiritually with ourselves, and praying thee to receive through them our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For here we offer and present unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a holy and continual sacrifice unto thee. May our strength be spent in thy service, and our love poured forth upon thy people. Thou who livest forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy servant. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with thrones, dominations, princedoms, virtues, powers, with cherubim and seraphim, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore in praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, these our oblations have served as tokens and channels of our love and devotion towards thee. But now we break the link with us and with all lower things, and we pray thee to purify and to hallow them as earthly channels of thy wondrous power. We desire to offer this holy sacrifice, especially for thy holy Catholic Church, for the President of the United States and all that are put in authority under him, for William, our presiding Archbishop, for all our bishops, clergy, and faithful, for those here present, and for all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity especially
and for those who are again about to enter this earthly life through the portal of birth, and likewise for their mothers-to-be, especially Likewise, do we offer it for all those thy children who have been delivered from the burden of the flesh, especially for That freed from earthly toil and care, they may enjoy the felicity of thy presence, ever evermore praising thee in word and deed, O God, everlasting, living, and true. Wherefore, O Holy Lord, Father, Almighty, we pray thee to look down on and accept as a channel these offerings, and with thy Holy Spirit and word do bless approve and ratify them that they may become for us the most precious body and blood of thy son who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands and with his eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee God his almighty father giving thanks to thee he blessed break and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, and eat ye all of this, for this is my body. like manner after he had supped, taking also this noble chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of this, for this is my blood. As oft as ye shall do these things, Ye shall do them in remembrance of me. hidden splendor thee, who in thy sacrament dost deign to be. We worship thee beneath this earthly veil, and here thy presence we devoutly hail. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, monarch of the angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, throne it on thine altar. Ever to thee be highest glory given. Word of the Father, splendor everlasting. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. 
O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, bearing in mind the ineffable sacrifice of thy Son, do offer unto thee this most precious gift which thou hast bestowed upon us. In token of our love and of the perfect devotion and sacrifice of our minds and hearts to thee, we pray that thou wouldst command thy holy angel to bear our oblation to thine altar on high, there to be offered by him, who as the eternal high priest forever offers himself as the eternal sacrifice. And we do pray for thy servant who ministers at this altar, that meetly celebrating the mysteries of the most holy body and blood of thy Son, he may be filled with thy mighty power and blessing. Likewise, we pray thee to sanctify thy people here present with these thy heavenly gifts, and through these mysteries do thou hallow, quicken, and bless them that both in their hearts and in their lives they may show forth thy praise and glorify thy holy name. All these things do we ask, O Father, in the name and through the mediation of thy most blessed Son. For we acknowledge and confess with our hearts and lips that by him were all things made, yea, all things both in heaven and earth, with him, as the indwelling life do all things exist, and in him, as the transcendent glory, all things live and move and have their being. To whom with thee, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be ascribed all honor and glory throughout the ages of ages. Amen. Instructed by the words of sacred scripture and following the tradition of Holy Church from of old, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here do we give unto thee, O Lord, most high praise and heartfelt thanks for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in the Holy Lady Mary, our Heavenly Mother, and in all thy glorious saints from the beginning of the world, who have been the choice vessels of thy grace and a shining light unto many generations, and we join with them in worship before the, thy great white throne, whence flow all love and light and blessing through all the worlds which thou hast made. O Son of God, who showest thyself this day upon a thousand altars, and yet art one and indivisible, in token of thy great sacrifice, we break this, thy body, praying that by this action ordained from of old thy strength, thy peace, thy blessing, which thou dost give us in this holy sacrament, may be spread abroad upon thy world. And as thou, O Lord Christ, wast made known to thy disciples in the breaking of bread, so may thy many children know themselves to be one in thee, even as thou art one with the Father. Amen. peace of the Lord be always with you, and with thy spirit. O 
thou, who in this adorable sacrament hast left us a living memorial and pledge of thy marvelous love for mankind, and dost therein graciously draw us into wondrous and mystic communion with thee, grant us so to receive the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that our souls may be lifted into the immensity of thy love, and that being filled with a high endeavor, we may ever be mindful of thine indwelling presence and breathe forth the fragrance of a holy life. Amen. that desires to partake in the body of the Lord, draw nigh and receive this most holy sacrament.
under the veil of earthly things. Now have we communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. Soon with open face shall we behold him, and rejoicing in his glory be made like unto him. Then shall his true disciples be brought by him with exceeding joy before the presence of his Father's glory. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We who have been refreshed with thy heavenly gifts do pray thee, O Lord, that thy grace may be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that it may continually be made manifest in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Ite misa est, Deo gratias. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. May the holy ones whose pupils you aspire to become show you the light you see give you the strong aid of their compassion and their wisdom. There is a peace that passeth understanding. It abides in the hearts of those who live in the eternal. There is a power that maketh all things new. It lives and moves in those who know the self as one. May that peace brood over you, that power uplift you, till you stand where the one initiator is invoked, till you see his star, Shine forth. Amen.